Hey everyone, in this video I want to teach you how to use a truth table to test an argument for validity. And the best place to start is just with a very brief definition of what it means for an argument to be valid. So the best definition to use for validity when it comes to truth tables is the following. An argument is valid if and only if it is not possible for the premises of that argument to be true and for the conclusion of that argument to be false. And the reason for this is that all it means for an argument to be valid is that its premises guarantee its conclusion, right? And I have a whole video where I talk about the definition of validity in depth, so if you'd like more on that, uh, go ahead and check that video out. But for our purposes, what matters is just that arrangement of truth values, right? It cannot be the case that an argument has all true premises and a false conclusion. Here's another way of putting that. If you find an argument where it is possible for all of the premises to be true and the conclusion to be false, you're dealing with an invalid argument, right? Again, because if the argument were valid, then that wouldn't be possible, right? Because the premises would guarantee the conclusion. Okay, so let's just jump right in. I have two arguments up on the board, right? One of these is valid, one of them is invalid. And I'm going to show you, we'll go ahead and we'll calculate the truth values, right? We'll, we'll go through the first one, then the second. And I want to show you how, once you've done that, you can actually see whether it is that the argument is valid or not. And it's really easy, really straightforward to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So here, here I have a truth table for you. It's all set up, right? And it's already ha it already has all of its initial truth values laid out, right? And if you don't know how to do this, I have a video on how to set up truth tables uploaded as well. So feel free to check that one out. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to run through this. And we're just going to calculate all of the truth values. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so we start off with this conditional, right? So if p, then q. So we know that a conditional is uh, false if and only if the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. And otherwise, it just calculates the truth, right? So let's see. If p is true and q is true, then we know that our conditional is true. If p is true and, our condition, and, our, um, and q is false, then we know that our conditional is false. If p is false and q is true, then we know the conditional is true. And if p is false and q is false, then we know that our conditional is true. Done. Let's move on to the next one. We now have a negation, right? Well, negations are really easy to calculate, right? Because if uh, the atomic statement is true, then the negation will turn out to be false, right? And if the atomic statement is false, then the negation will turn out to be true. So let's see. p is true in the first two rows and false in the next two rows. So we're just going to write the opposite of that. False, false, true, true. And now we have the negation of q. So we're just going to do exactly the same thing. Right, so Q is true, false, true, false. So not Q must be false, true, false, true. And that's it, we've written out the truth table. All that's left now is to test to see uh, whether it is that this is valid. Okay, the definition of validity tells us that when an argument is valid, right, uh, if an argument is valid, then it's not possible for its premises to all be true and its conclusion to be false. Remember that a truth table shows us every single possible combination of truth values, right? For an argument, for a set of statements, for whatever, right? Anything that we put into it. Okay, so now all we have to do is check to see whether any row exists, not counting these. These are not part of the argument, right? These are just the atomic statements that we use to set things up. So from here forward, right, where we have our premises and our conclusion, can we find a row where every premise is true and the conclusion is false. If we can find that row, then we've proven that the argument is not valid because a valid argument would never have any such row. Let's check. The first row, true, false, oh, we can already stop, right? We're looking for a row where all of the premises are true and the conclusion is false. And here, one of the premises is false. So we move on to the next one. Both of the premises are false. So we can just move on to the next one. Here we have a row where the premises are both true. So now we check to see whether the conclusion is false. And it is. When you find a row with all true premises and a false conclusion, you know that the argument is invalid, right? Proven. That's it. Done. It's that easy. Okay, so that's a very simple argument. Let's move on to a more complicated argument, right? So now we have three atomic statements. So this means that we're going to be dealing with a lot more rows, right? We have eight rows. 
it is just worth it to go through this kind of exercise because your professors, some of them will give you arguments that have four atomic statements. I've come across those who give students uh, truth tables that have five atomic statements. I, I think that's a little cruel, but you know, I'm not in charge of those classes. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate this thing, right? So we have a disjunction, right? We know that disjunctions are false when both of the disjuncts are false, otherwise they're true. And it's for A and B, so we'll just run down these truth values. True or true is true. True or true is true. True or false is true. True or false is true. False or true is true. False or true is true. False or false is false. False or false is false. And that's every single possible combination of truth values for A or B. Now let's move on to the next premise, right? Here we have if A then C, right? So let's go ahead and calculate that. If A is true and C is true, then A implies C is true. If A is true and C is false, then this is false. True implies true is true. True implies false is false. False implies true is true. False implies false is true. False implies true is true. And false implies false is true. Okay, let's move on to the next conditional, right? So B implies C in this case. So true implies true, that's true. True implies false, that's false. False implies true, that's true. False implies false, that's true. True implies true is true. True implies false is false. False implies true is true. And false implies false is true. So we've calculated all of the truth values for the next column. All that's left now is the conclusion. The conclusion is literally just C. So we just rewrite those truth values, right? So C just alternates true, false, true, false, true, false, true, and false. Okay, we have our entire truth table set up. Now, once again, the task is really straightforward. We just need to find one row where the premises are true and the conclusion is false. Here's a way that we can save ourselves some time, right? We're looking for a very specific arrangement of truth values. So we can just go ahead and look at the conclusion. If what we're looking for is a row that has all true premises and a false conclusion, then we can safely ignore every single row where the conclusion is true, because that's obviously not going to meet our requirement. So then we'll only focus on the rows that have a false conclusion, okay? So let me stand over here. Let's go ahead and see. Here, the conclusion is false, but we also have a false premise. So this doesn't meet what we're looking for, right? Because we're looking for all true premises and a false conclusion. Here, we have a false conclusion, but we have yet another false premise. So this isn't going to cut it. Let's move down again. There's yet another false premise. So that's also not going to cut it. And if we come down to the very final row, we'll note there is yet another false premise. What have we learned? Well, the truth table shows us every single possible combination of truth values for a given argument or set of statements or what have you. So we've seen every single possible combination, and yet none of them have all true premises and a false conclusion. What this means is that this argument is valid because it's not possible for the premises to all be true and the conclusion to be false. And that's really all there is to it. You just have to set up your truth table correctly. Be very cautious when you're doing this. My suggestion is use lined paper so that you don't end up getting messy truth values, which happens to me sometimes, right? Uh, but write out your truth table. Make sure that you followed all of the rules. And when you're done, you have one simple task. Check all of the rows. Look for all true premises and a false conclusion. If you find that row, the argument is not valid. If that row does not exist, then the argument is valid. And you can know this with certainty. And that's all there is to using truth tables to test for validity. If you like this video and you want to watch more like it, where I talk about logic or philosophy, stick around. I'll see you next time.